Hi, my name is Guy, and I am the microbiome expert. If you're watching this video, you've probably struggled in the past to lose weight or keep it off. And now you're contemplating yet another New Year's resolution to slim down. I offer something different, and it's not some BS to lose weight with one special pill scam. I offer something based on the science, and I have helped many people. If you don't know who I am, it's probably because my platform is new. Watch my highly referenced educational videos. You'll begin to understand where I'm coming from. So, if you're willing to follow some instructions, then don't go anywhere. At the end, for much more perspective, you can continue on to a longer video, which is entitled, Type 2 Diabetes Slash Obesity in the Microbiome. There is an enormous amount of data linking your microbiome, that's the collection of bacteria and other little critters in your gut, to obesity. A lot of it centers around inflammation, as I cover in the follow-up video. But for a couple of minutes, I want to talk about the connection of the microbiome to food cravings and hunger in general. You see, when you have the correct balance of bacteria in your gut, not only do you address the inflammatory angle, but also the satiety one as well. When the health-promoting bacteria are in charge of your microbiome, they do many good things, one of which is to produce short-chain fatty acids, especially propionate and butyrate. Both go on to initiate many health-promoting processes, especially the production of butyrate. One of these butyrate-driven benefits is in regards to increasing satiety hormones, which reduce your desire to eat. This has been published in many research papers, and you can read a quote from the authors of this paper here. In a similar vein, these authors analyze the microbiomes of subjects in regards to food choice impulsivity as it relates to metabolic syndrome, of which obesity is a part. They found that those who had better impulse control had significantly more abundances of a number of key butyrate-producing bacteria within their collective microbiome. Bacteria I mention all of the time, with names like Roseburia, E. halii, E. elegans, and Oneristypes, among others. If you're new to my videos, these strange-sounding taxa may scare you but in time, you'll know the names and understand how they benefit you. These and other oxygen, pH, and antibiotic-sensitive butyrate-producing bacteria are key to our health across all conditions. And your common probiotic, lactobacillus, is not among them. In fact, if you watch the video at the end, the obesity and metabolic syndrome data for lactobacillus is terrible. If these bacteria are listed here, and others like them, could be sold as probiotics, the sales and benefit would be astronomical. But they can't, and therefore you're left with buying inferior products marketed to you. But we can feed these health motors the fuels they love. So, if you can't resist certain foods, which we are hardwired to crave, then let's alter your satiety hormone balance to help you resist them. Just a brief pause here in the presentation, if you could just hit like and subscribe, it would really help this channel out. To further demonstrate the benefit of feeding the health-promoting bacteria in your gut, we had this intervention study, where type 2 diabetes subjects were given the usual care or a high-fiber diet. And no surprise, as shown in C, we see significant differences in the butyrate genome for the high-fiber group, so shown as W, as compared to the usual care group, U. And where was this increase in butyrate potential coming from? From the feeding of the microbiome with a complex regimen of fibers. And which butyrate-producing, health-promoting superstars, which I always talk about, were significantly increased? F. prausitii, E. rectal, E. elegans, Ruminococcus species, and Clostridium lepto. What other good things happened from this prebiotic-slash-microbiome-slash-butyrate connection? Here in A, B, and C, we see significant differences in improvement between the two groups in all categories of blood sugar measures. And here in G, we see a very significant difference 
for something called GLP-1. The levels of GLP-1 are much higher in the high fiber group as compared to the normal care group. GLP-1 is a multifaceted hormone with its most pronounced effects playing roles in metabolism. In fact, there is a whole set of drugs dedicated to activating this hormone. Do you know the name of one of those? Ozempic. The wildly popular drug which is indicated for this, but is being used off-label for weight loss. And guess what? Butyrate does the same thing. One of the many ways butyrate is so beneficial is that it plugs into and activates GLP-1. So why not do it naturally and get a slew of other benefits in the process? Here is another intervention trial to highlight how properly addressing the microbiome can not only result in significant weight loss, but also in a slew of metabolic syndrome markers. In this trial, they did not use a blend like I do. They did, however, use resistant starch which is one of the prebiotics I recommend. They used 40 grams of it per day, which is no small amount, but also not unheard of in trials. So what happened with these NAFLD subjects after four months of therapy? A lot. Let's make no mistake about this therapy. Resistant starch solely addresses the microbiome. There is no other mechanism. I say this because the results are impressive. But then again, Every one of my videos is built to demonstrate the power of the microbiome across all forms of health and disease. So here in table one, we see significant reductions in total cholesterol, triglycerides, and LDL cholesterol with a significant increase in HDL. To continue, we see significant improvements in fatty liver, total weight loss, subcutaneous and visceral fat, liver function tests, serum LPS as a marker for gut permeability and a driving force behind inflammation, which we see here represented by TNF-alpha. Imagine how popular a drug would be if it could do all of this. As the former director of medical education for a microbiome firm, and now with my own platform, I have helped and continue to help people from all over the world. The vast majority of my people have severe gut issues. But guess what? In obesity, the microbiome also suffers from severe dysbiosis as well. It's just that your set of symptoms may be a little different from those of others. In working with those who are overweight or obese, with or without gut issues, I address the root cause. I use a combination of properly blended and dosed prebiotics to address obesity from the microbiome, and I combine that with a modified keto diet. The keto diet does work for weight loss, but the microbiome needs to be supported in the process. A high animal food diet is not good for the microbiome. I explain this in my videos on the keto and carnivore diets. But when it comes to weight loss, the combination of the keto diet with my microbial support is the best of both worlds. It addresses obesity from multiple angles at the same time. And these prebiotics I recommend, by their very nature, are not additional calories for you. Their fuel is locked behind bonds that our enzymes cannot access, but the enzymes of our microbiome can. And when we feed the true health promoters, they will in turn do amazing things for us. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. And I will say that uh, basically every single day on my YouTube comments and in emails, I get a lot of thanks from people out there who really appreciate the information I've been sharing. And so part of that is you're welcome. The other part is you can contribute by uh, doing clicking on the super thanks below. And if you're not uh, doing a consultation with me and you're not purchasing any protocols, it's a great way to support this channel. Uh, each presentation, depending on you know, the presentation, uh, but most of them take an incredible amount of time to put together. There's a lot of material. There's a lot of data checking. And so it's just, it's just, you know, sometimes 50, 60, 70 hours to put together one presentation. And so if you can just click that super thanks, I'd appreciate that. And we'll keep the information coming.